This video is a review of the early quantum theory chapter of the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start out by motivating the need for why uh, classical mechanics isn't sufficient and why quantum mechanics is needed for systems of very, very small or very light particles. So the first example is black body radiation that when we heat up what's called a black body and we emit um, some spectrum of radiation out of it, what is the intensity of each individual frequency or wavelength of that light? Well, according to classical theory, you get something that depends on the frequency of the light squared, which is a problem because that means there'd be an infinite amount of infinite energy radiation, which is a physically impossible result. So Planck solved this by deriving this following kind of expression, assuming a quantization hypothesis where the density went up, reached a maximum, and then decayed back down to zero. This worked out well and matched with experiment when this value of h was equal to what is now known as Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. The second example was the photoelectric effect explained by Einstein where when you shine a UV light on a metal surface, you can eject electrons, but the kinetic energy of these electrons is not what you'd expect from classical mechanics. Um, from classical mechanics, you'd expect that at a constant intensity, there would be no effect on frequency on the elect energy of the electrons. But in fact, the electrons don't get ejected unless light has a minimum threshold frequency, nu naught, and it increases linearly thereafter. So, uh, this, this was explained by Einstein's type of equation here, that the kinetic energy equals h nu minus phi, and the h that Einstein found to match experiment here is the same h that Planck found in black body radiation. Next we have the Rydberg formula, where various scientists over the course of the late 19th and early 20th century found that when you heat up hydrogen atoms, they emit distinct sets of wavelengths or frequency for light, as you go. So the first uh, set of these would be Balmer in the visible, or Lyman in the ultraviolet, or Paschen in the infrared. And it was eventually Rydberg that explained this with these two quantum numbers, these quantized integer values that explain these all these sets of lines, where this experimental Rydberg value of this constant was 109,677 wave numbers. Later, Bohr proposed a model for the hydrogen atom. He assumed that the angular momentum of our electron going around in a fixed circular orbit was quantized. And when you do that, you get that the radius of the lowest energy state is what is now known as the Bohr radius, 0.529 angstroms. And you get that the energy of each of these levels, their kinetic energy plus their potential energy due to nuclear attraction, is equal to a negative constant times one over some quantum number squared. The interesting thing here is that the RH in this expression is the exact same value predicted by Rydberg a few years earlier. And we move on to the de Broglie hypothesis, where we saw that light has both particle and wave-like properties. So de Broglie assumed that matter must have both particle and wave-like properties as well. So he proposed that the wavelength of matter was equal to Planck's constant divided by its momentum, or Planck's constant over m times v. And this is inconsequential for large, heavy objects, but for things like the mass of an electron, the wavelength of these is observable and turns out to be things that are around an x-ray. And finally in this chapter, Heisenberg developed the uncertainty principle to explain uh, the phenomena and measurement that the more precisely you measure the position of a particle, the less precisely you can know its momentum. And the minimum value of the product of these two is Planck's constant uh, divided by two pi, h bar divided by two.